out. This is how animals turn into zombies. Hello, lovely YouTube family. Welcome back to OOB. Before we start, I would want you to hit the red subscribe button so that you never miss out on any of our videos. This true life zombie creator transports us to the tropics, where a fungus known as Ophiocordycepus unilateralis, I hope I'm saying this correctly, terrorizes ants, cockroaches, and butterflies. Invasion of the human body by a fungus? Yes, this may be found in nature. The ants, on the other hand, have a very tough time dealing with this. This cunning fungus has devised a method of infiltrating ants' bodies and gaining control of their thoughts. Once an infection has begun, the fungus takes total control. It essentially disables the ant's ability to manipulate its limbs. When the fungus infects an ant, it spreads throughout its body, depriving it of nutrition and taking over its consciousness. The fungus convinces the ant to flee its nest and climb a neighboring plant. The plant is stopped at a height of about 10 inches, which is the ideal temperature and humidity for the fungus to thrive. The ant is then forced to lock its mandibles around a leaf for the rest of its life. It eventually shoots a long stalk through the ant's head, which develops into a bulbous capsule containing its spores. This is advantageous because the ant usually climbs a plant that is close to or overhangs the foraging roots of its colony. As a result, the fungal spores fall down on more ants below, restarting the cycle. Worst of all, according to research, the ant is effectively a prisoner within its own body. Let's take a look at those birds. Leucochloridium would be a fantastic topic for a horror film, if it were easy to say. It's not only foreboding and sound, but is also a terrible aspect of mother nature. A snail's biggest fear is this parasitic worm. Here's how the weird sequence goes down. Through the eye stalks of a snail, the worm infects it. It then starts pulsing the snail's stalks as fast as it can, making the snail's eyes look like caterpillars. The worm then convinces the snail to venture out into the open, where birds swoop down and rip the snail's eyes out. What? In nature, this heinous process is known as aggressive mimicry, and it's kind of like if an alien abducted one of us and forced us to dress up as a zebra and go right up to the pride of lions. The worm breeds in the intestines of the bird once it has entered its digestive tract. Its eggs finally fall out of the bird and are devoured by another snail who doesn't seem to realize that his pals have been acting a little bit like zombies recently. Sadly, this isn't the worst thing that could have happened on this list. Wait, barnacles can also transform things into zombies? Sacalina is a body snatching barnacle that takes over crabs according to legend. They absorb the crab's nourishment for themselves, causing the crab's growth to be stunted, all while protecting themselves with the crab's shell. Oh, and don't forget about that, there is one more thing. These crabs are also rendered sterile as a result of these chemicals. Sacalina belongs to the parasitic castrator family of parasites, which isn't as awful as it sounds. Technically, the phrase refers to any parasite that interferes with its host reproductive function for personal advantage. So how can these barnacles get inside a crab's stomach? When the Sacalina larvae discover a crab, they search for a joint to inject themselves into. The Sacalina develops inside the crab before erupting as a sac on the bottom of the crab's posterior thorax. Isn't this starting to sound like aliens? To govern the crab, this parasite will take over the crab's intestines, reproductive system, and even central nervous system. When a female Sacalina is implanted in a male crab, it disrupts the hormonal balance of the male crab. This sterilizes the crab and finally transforms the crab's body into that of a female crab. The male crab is then forced to act like a female crab by the female Sacalina. They'll train the male crab to do female mating rituals, and he'll even develop caring traits like a female crab. Yes, I'm relieved that I'm not a male crab right now. If you believe these animals are evil, you'll want to check out our film, Animals Who Are Evil Geniuses. Have you ever considered how fungus spreads? No, we're going to tell you anyhow. It's strange, like pretty much everything else in this video. The amphibian chytrid fungus is a fungus that has been reported to infect amphibians and cause them to die. It spreads by infecting tree frogs throughout and causing them to try harder to attract possible mates in order for the fungus to spread. Yes, a frog has an STD. BD, as is known, generally only infects frogs and bills them. It's been accused for causing the extinction of an entire frog species. However, one species of tree frog, found in Central Asia, Japan, and Korea has developed a resistance to the fungus, with one big exception. It increases the likelihood of men mating. 
Infected male Japanese tree frogs had a considerably more enthusiastic mating call, making them more likely to attract a female partner, according to new research. This is especially strange because the illness causes the frogs to become drowsy. Male frogs, on the other hand, use far more energy to produce a higher frequency of higher-pitched mating calls. Female tree frogs, it appears, can't get enough of these mating sounds. Once they get together, the male passes the disease to the female, and she passes it on to her offspring, and presumably, they grow up, find a mate, and pass BD on to them. Think there are any Japanese tree frogs out there that don't mind this fungus? Also known as the Gordian Worm, which is a tribute to Alexander the Great and the mythical Gordian Knot, which looks like a bundle of horsehair worms. With 351 species in their midst, these worms effectively scare a large number of arthropods. These creatures deposit their eggs in a body of water, and their developed larvae just sit at the bottom of the pond, waiting to be devoured by other insects' larvae. Let's use crickets as an example once more. Once inside the cricket, the larvae enter the body cavity and develop in size, frequently reaching the length of at least one foot. Oh yes, they'll also drill a hole in the side of the cricket to let them see outside. The cricket team, ignorant that they have received guests, continues about its business. These worms manage to persuade the cricket to stop chirping, reducing the likelihood of the cricket being eaten, which would jeopardize the worm's goal. Just a brief note about crickets, they aren't very good swimmers. For one thing, they haven't developed to be able to do so. Second, they have little chance against fish, frogs, or anything else seeking for a meal. With that in mind, it's surprising to see crickets jump into the water on occasion. That's because the worm is tampered with their minds. The cricket's life is cut short and the worms emerge from the hole I indicated before, searching for a partner. They'll be ready to go on to the next life after they've accomplished it. It's a different story when it comes to roaches, for a very good reason. They should maintain their distance from jewel wasps. Jewel wasps, it turns out, contain a powerful toxin that effectively transforms cockroaches into their puppets. Female jewel wasps have developed to have a unique chemical component that they inject into the brain of the cockroach thus converting it into a zombie. The jewel wasp armed with strong neurotoxin may take over a roach in seconds. The first sting paralyzes the roach and once in charge, the wasp injects chemicals into the roach's brain to keep them under control. After the wasp has gained control of the cockroach's thoughts, the cockroach just performs what the wasp commands. The cockroach, for example, will go considerable efforts to prepare for the event. It is, after all, a dinner party. Each roach's antenna will be chewed in half by the wasp. The wasp, which is too tiny to carry the roach, then pulls one of the roach's antenna like a leash and leads the victim to the wasp's burrow. The wasp will place an egg on the roach's abdomen and the burrow. It then uses stones and leaves to block the burrow opening. The roach will just remain in the burrow for three days, waiting for the wasp eggs to hatch. The wasp larva consumes the roach in a way that optimizes the roach's chances of surviving at least until the larva enter the pupil stage and creates a cocoon within the roach's body, which takes about eight days. That's all for today. I hope you liked the video. If you did, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel so that you never miss any amazing videos from us.